Million Dollar Chop by Dan Gutman, Chapter 11. And I'm just looking back at Chapter 10, and I remembered that Mr. Finkel offered Eddie a college scholarship if he missed the shot and his mom's job back. And Eddie said, no, thank you. So now Mr. Finkel's really mad. Here we go. The mystery friend. Hmm. You know what? I wonder... Remember there was a guy that was in the gym on the bleachers a while back? I wonder if that's who they're talking about. All right, here we go. As soon as I turned down George Finkel's offer, strange things started happening. The phone rang one morning while Mom was out on a job interview. I picked it up. You're going to miss loser, an eerie voice said. Who is this, I demanded, but the caller hung up. Early one morning, Annie knocked on the door. And she told me she wanted to show me something. She led me to a big patch of grass on a hill at the front of the trailer park. Somebody had taken a lawnmower and mowed the words, Choke Artist Lives Here, into the grass. Ooh. The next day when Annie and I went out to our old backboard to shoot a few foul shots, we saw from a distance that somebody had spray painted, had spray painted graffiti on the backboard. When we got closer, we could see the words, air ball. That kind of shook me, but I decided to stick around and shoot some foul shots anyway. I missed my first five in a row. This was unusual. I had practiced so much in the past month, I could practically sink foul shots in my sleep, but I just didn't seem to have the touch. I tried some more, but I kept missing just about every shot. I had no idea what was wrong. And this is me making a prediction on the side. I have a feeling he's just plain nervous. Too many people are out to get him. But that's my prediction. Let's see. Back to the story. Hey! Finally, Annie shimmied up the pole to check the backboard. <gasps> she was up there for a few minutes before she realized what the problem was. Hey! She called down. Somebody raised the rim. What? Sure enough, there were two lines on the pole where the backboard used to be bolted. The entire board had been raised a few inches. Somebody had gone through a lot of trouble to throw off my aim a little bit. And now, while all this was happening, every couple of days, a strange letter would arrive in the mailbox. There was never a return address. This is what one of them said. It said, Dear Mr. Eddie Ball, and it's Miss, M-I-S-S, -S -S, in capital letters. And I'm pretty sure that's not the way to spell Mr. <clears throat> Make no mistake. Oh, definitely that's not the way to spell mistake. Somebody's putting the word Miss in all of these words. Make no mistake. You're going to miss. I'm coming to miss. I'm going to miss you after you miss. Will you miss me? Your mystery friend. Oh, I definitely know that's not the way to spell mystery. Something told me that George Finkel's fat finger was involved in all these pranks. He was the one who would benefit the most if I missed the shot. And when I turned down that bribe, he sounded like he was out to get me. I ought to report Finkel to the FBI or the NBA or somebody. I told Annie after showing her the letter. I have a better idea, Annie said. Keep your mouth shut. If word gets out that Finkel is trying to tamper with his own contest, the whole thing might be called off. And that's exactly what he wants. But I want to make him pay for this, I said, ripping up the letter. You want to make him pay, Annie asked? Make the shot. She was right, of course. The more Finkel bothered me, I decided, the more determined I would become. Naturally, I wanted to sink the shot to get the million dollars, but I also wanted to sink the shot to drive George Finkel out of business. One more strange thing happened in the middle of all this. I was practicing with Annie at the gym one afternoon, and the school band was rehearsing in there, too. It was hard to concentrate with all this noise. I was missing more shots than I usually do. And Mr. Stokely pulled me aside. 
Do you know what an Achilles heel is, Eddie? I don't know, some kind of shoe, I guessed. <laughs> Annie thought that was funny, but her dad hushed her. An Achilles heel is a weakness, and you've got one. I knew very well what my weakness was. Distraction, I said. Oh, I know how Eddie feels. I'm very distractible, too. That's right, Mr. Stokely agreed. When it's just me and you in this gym, I've seen you hit 90, sometimes 95% of your shots. But as soon as there is some noise, a little commotion, you start to miss. Doesn't matter how good a shooter you are, if you can't do it with the pressure on, then Madison Square Garden is going to be rocking when you step up to that foul line. It's going to make this place sound like a tomb. I know. So what are we going to do about it? Concentrate harder, Mr. Stokely corrected. Nope, you're going to concentrate less. Remember the abbreviation for mountain? M-T. Right. Empty your brain. Clean it out. Think of nothing. Now go back and try a few more. I stepped up to the foul line and made a real effort to empty my brain. Just as I was about to release the first shot, Annie leaped in front of me. Aye! she screamed. My shot missed. I set up to shoot another one, and Mr. Stokely blew his whistle behind my head as I was about to shoot. The ball bounced off the rim. You're going to have to work more on this, Mr. Stokely said. At that moment, another noisy distraction caught my attention. At the far end of the gym, a guy fell off the bleachers. He hit the hardwood floor pretty hard, and a camcorder, camcorder slipped from his hand. And a camcorder is like a phone with a video, but it was before they had phones with videos. So it was a special camera that took video. He looked like the guy I had spotted the camcorder earlier, but I still couldn't tell for sure. The guy struggled to his feet and quickly hobbled out of the gym without saying a word to anyone. Now I was sure Finkel was spying on me.